Hi there everyone, welcome to Technoholic. Today in this video, I am super excited because today in this video, we will be doing unboxing and assembly of 12th generation Core i7 uh, PC, which cost me under 70,000. Yes, you heard it right. And this entire PC configuration costs less than 70,000. We will be doing step by step assembly of this entire PC build so that if you also buy the same component you can also do it by yourself so without ado let's get started so before I start assembling all these components let me quickly give you a glimpse of all the component one by one so here we're going to use Intel uh, 12 generation uh, latest core i7 processor which is 12700 which is non k variant and non f variant what does this mean this means that you will have a dedicated thermal solution with it so you do not need to buy a dedicated fan or dedicated cooler and because this is normal 12700 variant not the f variant so this means that you do not need to buy uh, or you do not need a separate or dedicated graphics although you can have but in order to run this PC, you do not need a dedicated GPU. So that's good thing about it. Now let me talk about our hard drive. So this hard drive is actually Gen 4 SSD, which means that you will have double the performance compared to Gen 3 SSD. So previously we used to see, you know, the hard drive from let's say Samsung or even from WD. The hard drive top speed read and write was around 3000 to 3500. However, here in this case, since this is Zen 4, we are getting 7000 Mbps of read speed and around 4300 Mbps of write speed, which make it one of the fastest hard drive available in the market. Then we will be talking about the RAM that we have used with this. So we have used a 3200 MHz RAM um which is not the fastest but in terms of cast latency this is one of very good one because these ram are cl16 and another thing that will make this one of the best value for money out there in terms of performance as well is right now 3200 is the kind of sweet spot you know where you will see these ram are coming at very good price compared to a latest ddr5 for example which are so costly so, um, you know, though we can have those RAM, but you know, the performance gain that you will see compared to this one is not that significant. So I will recommend you to still go with DDR4 stick and these are one of the best sticks available in the market. So that is why I have chosen these two sticks. So these two sticks cost me around 10,000 and these are 32 gigs. Okay. Now the next component here we have is this 600 watt power supply from Aunt Esport and this power supply cost me only 2090 rupees and that too you know when you find a kind of discount going on or some kind of offer going on you can always claim 10% additional uh, discount which make this power supply one of very compelling power supply in terms of value that you are getting and again this is very quality product now let's talk about our motherboard so the motherboard chipset we are using with this configuration is b660m which have all the necessary features that you need it also support uh, ram overclocking which in our case may be not required because the 12 generation of processor easily can support uh, 32 megahertz in their stock limit so which means that you do not need to overclock but still this board support overclock this this board also comes with 2.5 gigabit of LAN port which is great I would say not only that this board also comes with 2 gen 3.2 this board also support PCIe generation 4.0 uh, SSD so that is why we have chosen gen 4 SSD with it and this board comes with two such slot with one slot you will also get dedicated radiator so we will be talking about complete specs when assembling this PC. The cabinet we have chosen with this configuration is from Aunt Esport. And believe me guys, um, I mean, I generally recommend to go with some decent cabinet, but do not spend, uh, you know, plenty amount of money uh, in cabinet because cabinet, no matter how much costly it is, it definitely not going to affect any kind of performance. So this cabinet actually um, you know supports and comes with all necessary bells and whistle 
to support this configuration. So the time now came to assemble this PC. So we will be assembling each and every component step by step. So let's get started. So let's start unboxing of our cabinet first. So um, let me quickly open it up. And I got this cabinet for less than 2500 because the list price of this was 2500 Then I got additional 10% off from Amazon. So let me show you. And if you like this design, then definitely you can buy this as well. So this is what we got. And three, two, one. So this is how this case look like. And we can see the RGB light here. And if you look at here, you can see this is power button. This is reset button. And then you can see the processor and the SSD indicator. Then you will also find USB 3.0 and two headphone and mic jack. Then there is USB 2.0. Now on the side here we can see this tamper which uh, let me just quickly open it up and while opening you should take care of everything because you know it may got damaged because this one is really tampered glass uh, not the acrylic. So this is heavy and very fragile. Now I will keep it aside and we will assemble our PC. Okay, so let me place this aside. And now time now came to prepare our motherboard. So here you can see our motherboard and let me just open it up. I have already opened this box actually but still you can see this is how this board look like if we talk about some of major components here you can see a very big heat spreader or you know a radiator are added to the top of these MOSFET and the good thing about this board is that it comes with a superior quality MOSFET which kind of ensure proper power delivery to this uh, CPU from this ATX connection. If we talk about other cool feature as we talked before, this comes with two M.2 slots. So one M.2 slot is this one, which comes with the, uh, you know, already they are, the motherboard is providing you a dedicated uh, thermal solution or dedicated heat spreader. So despite, let's say you did not receive any, uh, heat shield with your SSD so you can use this one also there is another one uh, M.2 port and all these ports are Gen 4 so that's a very good thing and here we can see with this size which is micro ATX you are getting four uh, four number of slots for RAM which is again a great thing and here as I was talking before you can see two Gen 3.2 two Gen 3.1 usb 3 ports and then here you can also see usb 2 ports and one very old this ps2 connection as well in terms of display output you are getting two hdmi and two display port connection which is great i would say and then here we can see these are uh, audio connection which are again a very high definition and a very high quality one now the next thing that we're going to do is let's assemble our cpu inside this before that, let me just open this board box and let me see if there is anything special. So I guess this is the booklet where you can read how we're going to, uh, you know, uh, assemble everything inside. So the most important thing actually is th these connections. 
which is JFP1 and we will do that in later stage which is this one so a lot of people actually got confused they got issues with this one but, but we are going to cover everything inside this assembly video so just stick around us with this box you also getting two SATA uh, connection which is great and this is like cover for this and a motherboard driver is DVD but generally we do not use it and here you are getting M.2 uh, screw and some more screw and we are also getting some MSI sticker now let me just place this board here which will be on the top of the static polythene now let me start assembling some off component uh, with it so let's start with CPU first so here is our CPU box and uh, you can open it like this you just need to cut off this seal and you can open this and here we go So this comes with thermal paste applied already. So here you can see the thermal paste is already applied. So you do not need to worry about the thermal paste. And here with this cooler, I don't know whether this is RGB. So maybe this is RGB, we can see it later on. So this, if this is RGB, then it will really look nice. And you can see Intel badging here as well. So I'm going to keep it like this and do not remove this thermal paste. Now here comes the CPU. So here is our CPU. You can see Intel Core i7, i7-127-00 written here. And now let me just quickly open it up. And while holding the CPU, do not try to touch these uh, pins. Because this may affect the transfer rate or this may affect the connection. So just hold your CPU like this. Okay. Now I'm going to keep this aside because now I will open the CPU socket in motherboard. So you just need to press this down and then slide it out like this. Okay. So in this way you can open this CPU socket. And now you may remove this dummy because removing it is necessary. And you can simply lift these hooks outside to remove this. In this way you can open this up. Now let me show you how you can assemble your CPU inside motherboard socket. For that you need to lift your CPU like this. Do not touch these pins. And now you need to look for this triangle as you can see here. So here you need to look for the triangle. And if you look here carefully the small triangle being etched here. So we can see the triangle mark here and a triangle mark there. So just see the triangle and then here you can see the Intel badging on the this side on this side and assemble your CPU like this. And even uh, you can see there are more pins which kind of ensure that you have placed your CPU in correct orientation. Now what I'm going to do is just uh, see whether your CPU sits there in a proper way or not. So once your CPU sits properly, what you need to do is you need to lock it back again. So I'm going to lock it back with using this lock mechanism. And like this you can easily assemble your CPU inside motherboard. Time now come to assemble this fan. So the fan assembly is also very simple and easy I would say 
so you can actually rotate this in any direction and then uh, just find these four holes and then uh, place the fan over CPU and now press these buttons like this once you hear this clicky sound this means that you have assembled your fan to verify this we can uh, we can turn around our motherboard and here we can see we have successfully uh, you know inserted or applied force to it and we have successfully assembled it so just verify that you have pressed enough so that this thing will come out from your board so just verify that that these locks are properly tightened up So now here we can see we have successfully assembled our CPU and CPU fan on motherboard. Now you may also assemble the SSD. So for that I will quickly open this SSD and let's see what's inside this box. So here we go. This is empty and we actually do not have any kind of uh, heat sink or heat shield with it which is not so good I would say. Now what I will do I will open my M.2 slot here. Now what I will do is I will open my M.2 slot. Since this does not come with any heat spreader, so I'm going to use this one, not this port. Now here we can see our hard drive and now I will rotate it like this and I will fit it inside and you just need to see the direction of this slot so we can easily find the direction of slot and now i can push it inside like this and now i can assemble this heat shrink with it for that i may remove this polythene you can see this box comes with this thermal pad as well which is very nice I would say because this will make a proper contact with this SSD. So now let's quickly assemble it back. So now here you saw we have successfully assembled our SSD. So that was really easy guys to assemble SSD. Now what I will do, I will connect this fan to the fan connection. So here we can easily see this SysFan1 written here, which is kind of indication that I can connect or I can fix this connector here. You just need to check for the mechanical poka yoka. For example here I can see the slot, so I just need to see the slot and then only I should or we should insert it here. So here we go, we have successfully connected our fan to the motherboard. Time now came to connect our RAM. So here we have got these two DIMMs of 16 gigs. So let's say you want to have 16 gigs of memory instead of uh, 32 or, or even you know you want to have 8 gigs of memory. So always buy memory or RAM in pair, then only you will have the complete speed of DDR4 then only you will have a complete speed of your RAM. So now let me quickly open it up. And let's see how it is. So the RAM also comes with a very nice heat spreader, which is great, I would say. Let me quickly unbox another RAM as well. 
so now while assembling these dims one thing you need to take care of you need to check for this return here like which slot need, needed to be used first so here i can see dim b2 and dim a2 needed to be used first so what i will do i will only install these memories in dim b2 and dim a2 the dim b2 is the first one and third one from the right so i'm going to assemble it here and even while assembling the ram it comes with mechanical poka yoka so you cannot install ram in wrong direction so while applying excessive force just check for the ram direction or check for this slot direction whether it is uh, in correct direction or not so after that you just need to insert your ram like this and open these locks before installing your ram after aligning now apply a little bit of pressure like this and you can see the clicking sound which will kind of lock it back again and here we can see i lifted that particular portion so i will be assembling it back again like this and here we go we have successfully installed our dim one and similarly i will be assembling this another ram after leaving one slot okay so i will leave one slot and then i will assemble this so guys in this way we can see we have successfully assembled our ram as well to these slot which we need to use first and <coughs> and let's say you are using some other motherboard so you just need to look for these indication now the next thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to assemble it in, inside the cabinet okay so now let me just place it like this now we're going to install our motherboard here so we will be installing our motherboard here but before i start installing my motherboard here let me open up other side so that I can uh, have the screw and other component which I will quickly show you in a moment. So I'm just going to and here we go. This other side look like this and here we have got all our screws and even there are some zip ties which will help us to tie the wiring harness or wiring cable so we got five zip ties and the speaker the smaller one for beep sound and these are the number of nuts and bolts now here one more thing I just wanted to show you I think it should be like this yeah yes so here we have got this hard drive tray so let's say you are using conventional hard drive so you can insert it here so uh, I can actually open this up So here you can easily fit your desktop hard disk drive. Since I'm not going to use any desktop hard disk drive, so I'm going to keep it back and maybe in future we may use it. So as of now, let's keep it back. Now the next thing I'm going to do is now I will be installing the power supply to it for that uh, let me just keep it aside and now I will be quickly opening this power supply which is again from Arn Sport and this one is actually 600 watts which is more than enough I would say okay. 
and here we go this is power cable that's all we have now let me just open it up okay so here we can see this 120mm fan and now we need to install it okay so we need to unzip this okay so what we need to do now is we need to keep this fan direction to our down and here you can see we have got this ventilation so now we will be inserting it here like this and now here what we need to do is we have these two that came up with our cabinet now we can mount it So now here we can see we have successfully installed our power supply. So before even we start configuring the connector, let's just install our motherboard. So now we're going to install this motherboard here and just keep this IO direction toward this side. As we can see the cutout direction. Now uh, let me just place it uh, carefully. Now the motherboard always come with this kind of IO guide and what you need to do is you need to place this guide here so that you require to do uh, before installing your motherboard because you won't able to insert like this so uh, just take out your motherboard first and then insert this So now here you can see how this plate look like. Now I will be aligning all the IOs to this plate. Now after that we need to apply more number of bolts here. Now I will fix this motherboard with the help of the screws that was available with the board. The smaller one, then another smaller screw here, and we need to install all the remaining screw. So now we have installed four screw, which is one, two, three, and four. I think four screw is sufficient enough to hold this board tight enough. So I'm not going to use the remaining screws. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to connect the remaining port and I need to connect the power supply. Now first of all, let me connect this fan, which I think I need to connect through power supply. So let me just have these power supply ports from the back side to front. So I think I will be showing you all these connections here. Some of connection actually uh, we can easily make it here itself. So let me open up this fan cable. And I'm going to keep it here. And I think this back fan cable can have the connection here itself. So I'll be using this one. Maybe this one. So you can connect this 
like this. And similarly, these are connection of our cabinet and uh, maybe this one is for LED. So I will again connect this here. At the back. And these connection can be again be connected to same one. So like this uh, we can connect them together. Now these connection we need to do with motherboard. So I will be just taking this out here. Now let's have them one by one. So first of all here we have got these color connector. This one is for hard drive or SSD LED indicator. This one is power plus and this one is power LED minus. So this one is power switch and this one is reset switch. So now what you need to do is you need to get your manual and here you can see the configuration how it should go so the same configuration i'm going to use here so we need to find this jfp1 so i can easily find this one is the jfp1 now i will be arranging all these connector here so as i can see here this is the orientation is like this which means five connector toward this side and four connector toward this side so now what I need to do is I need to uh, add first of all the hard drive or SSD LED so which is the red one this one so I will be placing positive toward so I will be starting this with positive so here we can also see positive and negative so I will be applying it like this Similarly, the next connection is reset switch. So let's have this reset switch, which is this one. Now there is no positive and negative for this. So I will be applying it directly. Okay. So the last is a reserve, which I don't think so we're going to use it. Now we need to connect power LED. Then again, plus is on the top. So let's find power LED. So here, I guess on the green is plus power LED. So let me just insert the first one, power LED. And then the second one is minus power LED. Now we have got this last power switch which again do not have any kind of orientation so we can insert it in any way so we are going to insert it like this the power switch will be written toward outside and in this way guys we have successfully installed all these connector pin so it is like this as shown the HDD LED plus and minus the first one and then this is a reset switch and then uh, we have got this reserve empty and then power LED then power switch the thing that I'm going to make is of these USB so this one is the USB so let me find an USB here so here I can easily find this USB so let's have this connection so just see for the number of connections so i just saw it how it is 
now I will be inserting it like this now the next thing uh, we can do is we need to make this HD audio connection so now let's find out where is audio so, and as I can see the audio is this one let's have it so here you can uh, easily verify there is no void on this one so uh, we can uh, you know insert it here only connection left is of this USB 3.0 so let's have it and here we go we have we can see we have this USB connection then again you can uh, see the direction of these voids which kind of you know ensure that you are inserting in correct direction or correct orientation so we can see this one is not void and here we don't have the pin so let's insert it okay so all the connection of cabinet is now being made now let me connect this small speaker in order to connect this speaker you need to find uh, something like buzzer written somewhere but in this msi board here we need to find this jfp2 and i found it so i will be connecting the speaker connector like this here and here we go so now the thing got left is this ATX power connection and ATX connection so this connector will be here so let's connect this and the direction of this will be like this since we have locked toward this side so we will be connecting it like this so here we have successfully connected this now the only connection left with this motherboard is this CPU power so let me just again place it here now I will find for CPU power which is this one connecting the CPU power here so here we have got these 8 connection which would be like this and then there are four more connection that again let me just place it like this so here we can see we have connected all the cables so let me just quickly go through at a glance so here we have connected our cpu power supply here this is the atx power this is the fan power and then this is usb 3.0 Although we also have got this port, maybe this one is USB Zen 3.2 but I am not using it as of now and as of now I am also not using this graphic card and this M dot. Also you will see one more complete PCIe into 16 lane slot. So both of these are also kind of empty. Now I will be quickly uh, tying up the remaining wires and then I will boot this system up. So now our system is almost ready. Now we will try to power on this device for the first time. So here I have connected this power source and HDMI to this monitor. Now let me quickly place it here in this corner. And uh, let's see actually how it is. So three, two, one. So 
So here is how it looked like. And if we see here on the right hand side, so you may see the system specification which is this is Intel 12 generation Core i7 12700 and the RAM that we have installed and you can also see the board and currently the RAM is actually at a speed of 2133 now here what I will do is I will click on OC profile And here, what I will do is I will overclock my RAM to this frequency. Which is this one. And now I will press F10. To save all my settings now I will apply this tempered glass back to this cabinet so this was like this as we can see here maybe uh, we also need to remove polythene but uh, we're going to keep it as it is for the time being Now after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to install operating system to it. If you also want to see how to install Microsoft Windows 11 to your device then I will put another video link in the description.